Hey everybody, welcome back on another birding adventure. Today, we are gonna be looking for a yellow-billed cuckoo and possibly a black pole warbler. So we are at the Divine Preserve out in, in, uh, Sio, in, Arbor, Township. in Sio Township. And uh, so yeah, come on, let's go try and find this bird. So, we kind of ran out of luck listening and finding the yellow-billed cuckoo and the black pole warbler, but there is something called a common yellow throat. If you listen really carefully, it's going witchity, 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 witch. Okay, so listen really carefully. I can't hear it right now. I'll try to find you another one, but I'll try to get a picture for you also a little bit later. Listen real quick, quietly now. The yellow throat's really loud here. Right there. Witchity, 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 witch. Hey, welcome back. Uh, so last time we did this experiment, we had this bottle and we put some vinegar in it. And we did the balloon with baking soda in it and we saw that well if there's no balloon the mass what happened to the mass of this when it reacted it started going down and where did that mass go well a lot of you said that the mass turns into something else we have uh, carbon dioxide being formed and that's leaving the bottle so leaving the bottle and and uh, making the mass go down. When we tried it with the balloon, uh, the balloon kept the gas in there, so the mass stayed the same. Um, and then I asked, well, what's gonna happen to the mass of the balloon? And, uh, and we're trying to figure out what the mass of the balloon's gonna be. Well, I did not take into account that there's gas in here also right so there's gas in here there's gas in the balloon i try to keep the balloon tight and so so the mass of the balloon and the mass of this is not going to all add up quite the same um but but did the mass of the balloon get heavier uh you know we we talked about that a little bit and so i i was going to re-weigh the balloon the balloon popped and so we're going to try this again really quick and and then we'll just get some results. So I have a green balloon this time. The balloon is right here. Oops, I gotta turn the scale on. So balloon, this is an empty balloon, weighs 2.9 grams. Same type of balloon, so 2.9 grams. I'm gonna put some baking soda. So the, the baking soda is gonna go in here, but we're eventually going to put everything all together, right? So I'm gonna take the baking soda, put this into here. All right, and then this has got vinegar in it. I'm gonna go ahead and weigh everything together, put this on top. So all together weighs 99.1 grams. Okay, now, um, I'm going to take the balloon and tip it on its end so that the baking soda falls in there and then it's going to react and we're going to see what happens to the mass again and then we'll tie the balloon off. So remember the balloon weighs 2.9 grams by itself. Let's go ahead and mix it. Okay, so we have our balloon, uh, we can see the mass, still 99.1 grams, okay? Um, make sure you have a, if you do this at home, make sure you have a really, really, really good seal on your balloon. Uh, try this a couple times, and if you don't, then gas leaks out of here, and then your results are gonna be, well, we know what happens, the, the, the mass goes down, right? So. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh the balloon now by itself, and I'm gonna take this off. Oh, we can hear it leaking already. So I'm really losing some mass. 
Um, but remember, there's like it's not gonna everything's not gonna add up perfectly because there's gas in here too that now is leaving, and so. Um, but we just want to see, is the balloon going to weigh the same or is it going to weigh more than um, what it originally was? So it's 2.9 grams. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and weigh it now. We can see 3.1 grams. I guess it's a little heavier. Gas does weigh something. So the gas that we had leaving and going into the balloon now weighs uh, making the balloon weigh a little bit more than what it did at the start. So the message here is we have mass. Things weigh something. Even gases, they are made up of atoms and we're going to start looking at how, what those atoms are doing. Those particles, remember in a chemical reaction, those atoms start shifting around and we're going to start thinking about what's going on during this reaction. Hey, so we looked at a reaction. We did the, the um, baking soda reaction. And what I want to do is look at the actual chemical equation now. So this is a chemical equation. This is what's going on with the different things. We have this substance here. This is called sodium bicarbonate. That is what's in baking soda. And so um, it's got hydrogen, some carbon. Um, and it's all that's stuck together with bonds. Remember, bonds are things that hold atoms together. They have, um, they have this repulsion and traction holding them in the perfect balance. And so we have all these things being held together. And then we have um, vinegar, which is acetic acid. This is what acetic acid is. And so... When they react together, they shuffle, the, the atoms shuffle around, and they form a couple of new things. We form this thing here, sodium acetate. This thing here is carbon dioxide. That's the gas. And then H2O, water. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look and see what's going on with the atoms with this, and, and why is – what's what's going on with um, – like why does the mass decrease what's leaving from the the reaction? So I'm going to take these two substances here. I'm going to put a, a circle around it. I call it a bubble. This bubble is going to be around here. That's going to hold those things together. So this is one molecule or particle. Uh, this is another particle. And in the particles are atoms. Those are atoms that are held together. And what we're going to do is we're going to count the atoms. So this is before the reaction happens. And we just we look at what's going on here. So Na is sodium. How many Na's are here? Well, there's just one. So we're just going to type in one. Hydrogen. Well, we have one hydrogen here, but we also have a couple of hydrogens here. So we have one and one, two, three here, four. So... Uh, we're going to type in four, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. So five total, okay? And do the same thing for carbon and oxygen. So we're going to type those in, count all the atoms before the reaction happens. Now, when they react, things shuffle around. And so what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to put some bubbles here. And the bubbles are going to have, this is first thing is going to be sodium acetate. This is going to be carbon dioxide, hydrogen, H2O. Move some stuff around. So I have this bin here. You don't have to use everything in here. But we're going to move the stuff into the bins, the bubbles. So Na, I have one Na. I'm going to take an Na, move it up in here. It's all right. Whoa, what's going on here? Na, I'm going to move this up in here. Okay, I have C2. I move a C in here, another C. Okay, so the two next to it tells me there's two C's. And keep doing that for all the rest of the things. So there's a couple H's, a couple O's. Move those all in here. Move the C, O2 in here, H2O in here. And then, once again, count the atoms over here and see how many I have on the right-hand side. Remember here I had one, 
I have five. How many NAs do I have on this side? How many H's do I have on this side? And then how does that how does that show the law of conservation of matter? Um, remember this big law of conservation of matter that matter can't be created, matter can't be destroyed. How does this equation show that? How does it support that? Okay. And then we're going to take a look at another reaction in just a minute. All right, so in this reaction here, something a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go back to a video that we made a couple years ago. Uh, this was done in our lab. Kind of make me feel a little nostalgic for the lab. Uh, kind of miss being in the, the good old lab surface and the scales and, and everything. But we have on the left here, we have... A, uh, a solution. So this is a solution. It's a, a, a solid that's dissolved in water. Um, the first one is sodium carbonate. And the next one is calcium chloride. And what we're going to do here is we're going to mix them together and, and you see they're both clear liquids, but when they form, they are going to, um, when they react together, they are actually going to form a solid. So we can see here the starting mass. Make sure you write down the starting mass. And I have, uh, I'm going to take one liquid and dump it into the other. So you can see here, there's some chalky stuff. The chalky stuff actually is a solid. I know that solids for most people are, you know, thinking, you think about what solids are. It's like a chunk of something. Um, like, so you can see normally, normally you'd have a, a chunk of something like a roll of tape or a box is a solid. But also, if you have dirt, dirt is a solid. If you put dirt in water, it just is dirty water. It's like floating around, and it's, it's silt or whatever. And, and so um, that is still a solid because it's not dissolved in it. It's not clear. So when you see this chunky white stuff that's floating around in the water now, that's a solid. It's kind of like having flour in water or cornstarch in water, it's a solid that's now in the water. So we made a solid. What's going to happen to the mass when I make a solid? Uh, make a prediction now. Write down, pause the video right now, and, and make a prediction of what's going to happen to the mass when you make a solid when you pour two things together. Okay, so now. When you're back, after you made a prediction, um, what happened to it? So you can take a look at the solid. Uh, once You can take a look at the mass after a solid has been made, and we see this is what happened. So why did this happen? What's going on with the atoms in this reaction? When you look at, um, so we're going to take a look at what is going on with shuffling of the atoms uh, during a chemical reaction and see how can we explain this. Hey, so in the second reaction we looked at a solid forming and so this is the equation for the second reaction. We have sodium carbonate, this first thing right here, and then calcium chloride. So I have two bubbles here. This is the sodium carbonate bubble and then the calcium chloride bubble. And like we did before, I want you to count the atoms that we start with. Okay, so go ahead and count them, tally them up in here. And remember that um, yeah, this is before the reaction happens. And then as the reaction proceeds, stuff switches around. And, and we end up forming uh, a new substance, calcium carbonate and sodium chloride. So the thing with the sodium chloride, um, well, first of all, let's, let's go ahead and take these atoms like we did before. You know, if I have Ca, CO3, this, the O, the 3 only goes for the O, okay, just like it is here. If there's an O with a 3 after it, that means there's 3 O's, not 3 C's. So it's just one C and three O's. You're going to go ahead and move things in here. Um, but then this over here, 
Um, there's a two here. And so some people may be wondering what that two is for. Um, it just tells me that we actually make two sodium chloride particles. And so this NaCl here, we're going to have an Na. I'm just going to do one of them, okay? So Na, we're going to have one of these in here. Uh, Cl, okay, so put a Cl in here. But instead of just one of them, we're actually going to make two of them. So you're going to make another one over here, NaCl. Um, and then we're going to have the CaCO3 and then count them up over here and see how many total we have on, on this side of the arrow. Okay, so one of the questions we're going to have, have you answer is, why do I need to make two NaCLs? Why can't I just make one of them? Why can't I just get rid of this one right here? Um, why do I need both of them? So what tells me I need that? 